All right, now up slowly. 1,001. See you through it. 1,003, that's better. 1,004. 1,005, hold it. 1,001, 1,002. Okay, go back. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. Okay, 1,005. Well, shit, that felt a lot different. Actually, it felt a lot harder, and that's probably a good thing. Have I been doing it wrong all along? Have you been doing it wrong all along? Well, maybe if your chest exercises in the tempo that you performed them at looked a lot like this up till now. But is it more effective? According to Mike Mentzer, it is. You see, Mike Mentzer made heavy duty training popular back in the day based around high intensity training. And guess what? It's made its resurgence once again. Well, was training at the tempo Mike was showing here that critical to making chest gains? Some would say no. Mike would say no mo, meaning no momentum allowed at all. Momentum is an outside force to the degree to which it's brought into play, reduces the force of the muscular contraction, thereby reducing the intensity, thereby reducing the result. Well, he's got a point. Because let's face it, any asshole can move a weight from point A to point B, especially if it's the ass that's moving the weight. What he's trying to say, though, is what matters most when you're trying to make a muscle grow is the amount of tension you can deliver to it. Remember, the language of muscles is tension, and you need to become fluent in that language if you want to grow. Here, what Mike's talking about is not relying on momentum and not just swinging the weight around, but focusing on making that chest take over every single inch of that contraction. It can only be done if you slow down that repetition greatly and have control over every single piece of the rep. And the good thing about this technique is that it actually is really good for people who have orthopedic issues. If you have any type of structural issue in your shoulder, for instance, it's going to feel a lot better when you take away some of that speed. The other thing it does is it negates the need for a long warm-up to have a great chest workout. Speaking of that, what would Mike say about what a great warm-up would look like? Generally, we have to do three warm-ups, a very light one just to get the blood flowing. Then we move to a moderate weight to set them up neuromuscularly and then the heavy one to get them ready for the big set to come later. And that couldn't be any more music to my ears, because you think as a PT, I might advocate using like two or three of these to get ready for a chest workout. Not at all. Just use some common sense, and this approach will work great. So if I was following Mike's heavy duty chest workout, training in that six to 10 rep range to failure, my first warm up set would be with very, very light weights, like 15 or 20 pounds, just to get some of that blood flow going, like he said. The second set, I'd probably be going for about half of what I was gonna ultimately use, maybe 40 or 50 pounds here, to proprioceptively make my joints aware of the positions I'm gonna need them to be in to absorb that bench press. The third and final set for me is actually something I do heavier than what Mike recommended. We call it a touch-up set. Knowing that I'm gonna fail in the six to 10 rep range in my working set, I'm gonna pick a weight that's gonna make me go no more than five repetitions to failure, and I'm only gonna perform two repetitions here because what that does is it prepares my body to make the working weight feel even lighter than it actually is. But however you get ready, the point is you need to be ready to perform what Mike wants you to do next, and that is one high intensity combination of two chest exercises. For your chest, you start out with a set of flat bench dumbbell flies or pec bench, you have an option there, followed immediately by a set of close grip incline bench press. Well, you know how I feel about the unsupported dumbbell bench fly. Don't do that exercise. I'm not a big fan of it. But we can get back to that, because I have a better option. But what's most important is understanding why he chose those exercises, because that's what led to the effectiveness of it. He set them up as a pre-exhaustion. In other words, that first exercise was set to pre-exhaust the chest so that when we get to the second half exercise, the compound exercise in bench press, you can get some additional assistance from the triceps and shoulders to actually push the chest even further to fatigue into that point of forcing muscle growth. Now the unique choice of the close grip on the incline bench press is actually done for that reason, to favor the triceps and put them at that mechanical advantage to assist in pushing that chest all the way through fatigue. Now, let's go back to that fly. I don't like it. I already said that, but in a less nice way. The point is, the unsupported chest fly is not a great exercise, especially if you're trying to train it to high intensity. In other words, with heavier weights that you're gonna fatigue in the six to 10 rep range. Now the pet deck is fine if you have access to it, but you wanna make sure that you're not setting the arms too far back or that you're using the foot pedal to get those arms out in front of you to risk any additional compromise of the shoulder. But all those are really not the best option. I'd rather see you do a cable fly because here I can still limit the contribution of the triceps by keeping the elbows in a relatively locked out position. And because of the way we have the cable set up here, there's no risk of that overextension or compromise of that anterior capsule. So it's a lot safer. 
But we still want to do it the way Mike advised here. And this is where we need to slow things down. Again, I admit it. I do most of my reps like this because I get lost in the desire to push more weight. However, leave that aside. Focus on getting the chest to do more of the work and slow it down. Four seconds up or five seconds up, a little bit of a squeeze at the top, four or five seconds on the way down. You will instantly find that whatever weight you are using is going to have to be decreased, but the effect of what you're feeling will be increased. Remember, the language of muscles is tension. Your tension will go way up. You will become much more fluent in this language instantly. Now when it comes to the back end of that superset, the inclined bench press, you're more than welcome to use a barbell. For me, it's just not really a great option, personally, because it doesn't feel so good. I have a torn rotator cuff and labrum in my right shoulder, and every time I try to do that exercise, it just doesn't feel right. But I can easily mimic Mike's intentions by just grabbing dumbbells and performing it as an inclined dumbbell bench press. The idea is the same here, though. Tempo and positioning. By keeping the elbows tucked, I'm going to allow the triceps to contribute a little bit more than usual. And that's a good thing, again, to back end this already pre-exhausted chest. The second thing is the tempo. That tempo is going to once again force you, maybe you have to drop the weight a little bit from normal, but again, drive more effective tension into the muscle you're trying to make grow. And by doing that, again, I'm making the exercise more effective. You can see, it's taking me four or five seconds to lift the weight off my chest. I go for a slow eccentric four or five seconds on the way down. Yes, my whole body is shaking because it's more difficult. I even go for a little bit of a hold in the bottom stretch position, which by the way, stay tuned, is one area that Mike and I firmly disagree. But we'll get back to that. The idea is choosing a weight that once again causes me to fail in that six to 10 rep range and making the chest do as much of the work as possible with now the assistance of the triceps and shoulders along the way. Add a little benefit for you fellow shoulder pain sufferers, the slow tempo here is actually gonna work in your favor there too because that slowed down tempo will make sure that there's stability in your shoulder. Any compromised structure is gonna do a lot better when there's stability to support it and when you do that, miraculously, the pain almost always goes away. And it wasn't just this specific exercise combination that held the secret to Mike's heavy duty chest gains. It was actually that he knew how to perform these two exercises. And specifically, three types of muscular contraction that when tapped into could take anyone's chest gains to a whole new level. Remember, you've got three levels of strength. The positive, we're lifting. The static, which is the holding. And the negative, which is the lowering. And the strongest. Look at that. He couldn't complete a positive rep but he held it easy and he's lowering it even oh. easier still. But there's a problem with this. It's not very practical. I mean, let's face it. We don't all have Ray Menser available to spot us on the pec deck and squeeze our hands together to make sure we have a good isometric contraction. We don't all have the Menser brothers or even two people we can scrounge up at the gym to stop what they're doing to help us in pursuit of our glorious gains. If you're using a chest press machine, you might have a three in 10 chance of that particular machine in your gym actually having a foot pedal on it that will allow you to even perform the eccentric only repetitions. And even on my chosen cable fly, sure there's some things I could do to perform my eccentric only repetitions, but they're not necessary because there's a better way to do it. And that is with a different exercise. And not just any exercise, but the one that Mike called the best chest, shoulder, and tricep builder of all time. Think of the dips as the upper body squat Dips are by far, without a doubt, they're unparalleled. They are the best exercise for pecs, delts, and triceps. You see, the dip not only allows us to most effectively target these three levels of muscle contraction and therefore increase the intensity of our workout, but it also does something else. It perfectly complements the flat and inclined work you've already done and gives us a good lower chest exercise. So when Mike says this after finishing his one set chest combo. That's all you're gonna do for chest, one set of Pack deck and one set of incline press. Can't do anymore. Can Cindy. you imagine doing 20 sets like that? Sure. As the orthodoxy prescribes? Hell no. If you did 20 sets like that, you have to have you leave here in an ambulance. I say yes, I agree, but that's only if you had access to the spotters and machines that this guy did to pull off that level of intensity. Because if you did not, I still think you have the capacity, though admittedly limited, to pull off what I'm going to show you here. And this is the dip tricep. And this is going to push you through that concentric, isometric, eccentric only failure one step at a time. So what I do here is I grab a weight. You don't have to, but again, your target rep range here is still six to 10 reps. And I perform a dip with this same slow tempo. Nothing has changed in terms of the intention of trying to deliver as much tension as you possibly could to the chest. Actually, you wanna lean forward a little bit here to assist with that because the more upright position will shift a little bit more of that focus to the triceps. Again, this is chest for training. Lean as far forward as you can. 
At this point now, I take it all the way till I can't perform another repetition. Again, that might vary for you. It doesn't really matter as long as you've reached that point. But at that point, I want you to stop and hold. And this right here, my friends, is probably where Mike and I would disagree the most. Never stop in the bottom extended position of any exercise. You only stop in the top contracted position. But it's here that I've got the benefit and advantage over Mike of 50 years of modern day research into the topic of strength and conditioning, where we know that's not the case anymore. And this includes the work of my good friend, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, who recently just talked about the many benefits of applying high levels of tension in that stretch position. It's good and we need to tap into it. And I want you to tap into it here. So you maintain that isometric hold at the bottom of that final concentric repetition for as long as you possibly can. And I'm gonna tell you right now, spoiler alert, it's uncomfortable, but you have to dig in. Again, this is where if you want to make gains, you can't back down. You got to keep pressing forward. At some point though, you won't be able to hold anymore, but you're not done just yet because you can take it one more level. Remember, the third and highest level of strength you have is eccentric strength. Well, we can do that by cutting out the rest of the exercise so we can step ourselves up to the top of the dip and focus on lowering ourselves down under control. With each subsequent rep, it's going to get more and more difficult. And the telltale sign here is you just won't be able to lower yourself down under control. You'll get faster and faster on every repetition. But until that does, you still want to go for a yet another rep. Fight for it, guys. Like I said, this is where the real gains are had. If heavy duty, high intensity training was easy, everybody would do it. But not a lot of people did because they couldn't muster up this type of intensity. But you can if you know what you're shooting for. So now at this point, you're going to be fried. And there's really nothing left for you to do in the gym. Mike always said, what's the benefit of spending one extra minute out in the sun if you've already triggered the stimulus for a suntan? None, because at that point, you're just going to be burning. At this point, I'm suggesting you get the hell out of the gym and recover. And for those doubting how important recovery is to this big picture, well, here's what the legend himself had to say. Most bodybuilders today do not understand that the big picture is comprised essentially of two elements of equal value. I emphasize the word equal. By equal value, I mean literally 50-50, not 60-40, not 70-30, but 50-50. The first element, the first 50% of the big picture, obviously, yes, of course, is the actual workout. Who would deny that? But just as important, the other 50%, not one iota less important than the actual workout is the rest period between us. And here's why. The workout, you must understand, does not actually produce. The word is produce. The workout does not produce muscular growth. Remember, the workout is merely what? A stimulus. It stimulates what? The body's growth mechanism into motion. It is the body itself that produces the growth, but only if you leave the body undisturbed by further exercise during a sufficient rest period. Or you could say it simply, in other words, if you don't rest enough, you don't grow enough, if at all. That is what I can wholeheartedly agree on because there is no understanding the value of recovery, especially when you're a natural lifter seeking new muscle gains. And that's where you're going to have to focus on maybe putting in a little extra effort. It might mean putting in a few extra days of rest in between chest workouts, or it might mean going to bed maybe an hour or two earlier to make sure you're not sacrificing good quality sleep. Or maybe you have to refocus on your high quality nutrition to make sure you're giving your body the nutrients it needs to grow. And in that case, even maybe focusing on supplementation to fill in the gaps or to make sure you're getting enough high quality protein to support new muscle growth. And in that case, guys, that's where I recommend a high quality protein like RX Pro 30G from Athlean RX. Guys, if you haven't already seen this, it's the highest quality protein on the market. With an industry leading 30 grams of protein per serving, you can be sure that you're not leaving potential gains on the table, and at the same time, you're getting them in a cost-effective way. Athlean Pro 30G is available over at athleanrx.com. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, guys, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up. And also, if you haven't done so, click subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video when we put one out. You're gonna wanna make sure you check out these other two videos here that I made about Mike Menser. They're gonna be super helpful for you to build your biceps and your triceps. All right, guys, see you soon.